Welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David. This week's guest yacht is a new brand from the biggest manufacturer in the business, Lagoon. We're talking about the XS15. Today, we're going to review its specifications, pricing and layout against three similar brand new yachts, do a full tour asking, what would Sylvia say? Naval gaze at an innovation or adjustment that might make sailing this a little easier, have a look at the used market for three to five year old comparables, and finally, give it a Dave score and compare the results with all our previous yachts. Starting from Vancouver, British Columbia, we fly across the Atlantic to the west coast of France and the home of last week's yacht at the Nautitec Yards in Rockford. From here, we bounce up the coast of France to the Lagoon Yards in Bordeaux, where the XS15 is built. For our wine pairing this week, we simply head up the river from Lagoon to the opposite shore in Maison Seychelles. Famille Seychelles. Margot Red Blend 2016 is our pairing this week. Situated 25 kilometers from Bordeaux, the Margot Appellation covers five municipalities and is the only one in the Medoc where you find the entire rich and vast range of wines from the first to the fifth Grand Cru class, making them the benchmark for generous, sophisticated wines with soft, ripe tannins. When mature, the grapes are, for the most part, hand-picked. In the cellar, the grapes are crushed and destemmed and then put into fermenters. The harvest is heated to around 22 degrees Celsius, Celsius to allow a quick start to the fermentation. Twice a day, pumping over with aeration takes place in order to extract as much color and tannin as possible. When the alcoholic fermentation is over, the vats are maintained at a temperature of around 30 degrees Celsius for 15 to 21 days. After the running off, the malolactic fermentation takes place in vats. A six to eight month aging in French oak barrels is done with racking every four weeks. The wines are fined and filtered on earth before bottling. The 2016 stands out thanks to the richness and elegance usually found in the first label of the Margot wines. Oh my, you can taste the oak in that. Cheers, let's have a look at that boat. Looking at the outside of this yacht, uh, of course you wouldn't be wrong in assuming you're looking at a Lagoon 50 because you basically are. Uh, but it, it, you know, they've done all the aesthetic touches they could with the colors, the rear helms, uh, those interesting um, helm uh, uh, canopies they've got there, uh, the um, very low boom, uh, and the graphics. Optional bimini slideback cover that allows you shade when you want it and sunshine when you don't. Uh, she's a handsome yacht. Uh, the lower profile without the flybridge uh, certainly does give her a different look, but you are looking at the same mold as a uh, Lagoon 50. Hopping into the statistics, we're comparing the Neil 51, the Utremer 51, the XS15, and the Katana Ocean Class 50. You can see right away that other than the Neil 51 with its significant upwind sail area of 171 square meters, the XS15 at 154 square meters is the next in line. As we head down onto the cabin top, you can see the XS15 has a significant beam, probably second only to the Neil 51. Moving to the saloon, you can see what a generous saloon the XS15 has, although the Ocean Class with its unique layout and uh, open concept merging the cockpit with the saloons beats it out. Uh, in addition, of course, the Neil 51 uh, has significant area, although it's a little deceptive because you have your owner's cabin on the main deck. Overall, the XS15 has the same square footage because it's the same hull as the Lagoon 50. Moving down into the cabins, 
uh, the width of the hulls on the XS-15 becomes very obvious. Uh, the Ocean class is close, but um, it's higher level of performance than those dagger boards with the encroaching dagger board cases certainly make it narrower. Obviously, the Ultramare being a performance yacht, much narrower, and the Amas on the Neil 51 are by nature much narrower. So the XS-15 cabin area uh, is by far the largest and widest, uh, which of course is going to impact its performance. Heading finally to the statistics themselves, the Neil 51 is the most economical of the group uh, with the XS-15 coming a close second. The length overall, uh, it, it, the leader is the uh, Ocean Class 50. And then looking at uh, air draft, uh, the XS-15 uh, takes the cake right there. The um, displacement, <laughs> Well, the Ultramare 51 is the lightest at 11.2 uh, uh, tons, and uh, the XS-15 is by far the most uh, significant, shall we say, at 19.05 tons. The XS, again, is a bit of a conundrum at this stage. I understand what they did. They took the molds that they currently had and they immediately created the XS brand, but about the only thing they did for performance was lower the boom and put the helms at the rear. You can't get away from the sheer tonnage of the uh, Lagoon 50 uh, molds. And now it should be said that the, the first real generation of XS, which is the XS 14, shed over three tons compared to its Lagoon counterpart, the, the 46. So their trajectory is certainly more towards a comfortable performance cruising cat. Uh, and the first iteration was more a branding exercise than anything else. However, they really are going in the right direction with the next real versions, the XS-14. The uh, upwind sail area is again led by our friends at Neil. And then the XS-15 uh, has a significant uh, self-tacking jib because they left the mast at uh, mid-cabin as opposed to moving it forward as they did on the 51. Uh, tankage uh, by far on the fuel tanks is the highest on the XS-15 at 1,040 liters. Uh, uh, but water capacity uh, is taken by the uh, Katana at 800 liters. Now looking at the hull construction, and I got to thank Kirk for getting me to look at this closer than I used to. Uh, the Katana takes the lead with e-glass and carbon fiber and Toiron uh, cloth re uh, reinforcements. Uh, they also use a vinyl ester uh, and foam core. The XS-15 is of course the same as the Lagoon 50, so nothing startling here. You've got uh, a glass reinforced polyester with a balsa core above the waterline, which, man, I'm surprised they're still doing that. At this point, I'd just like to ask you if you're enjoying the content, if you wouldn't mind hitting a subscribe, giving me a like, and sharing this out with a couple of folks who are interested in boats like we are. Thanks very much. Hopping on board, what would Sylvia say? Quick look at the canopy covering the cockpit there. Um, one thing to note, you have two options on this, uh, the bimini with the slide back shade or this very unique bimini option, which I'll show you later, which has inspired the um, Versa lounge. Uh, here we have the uh, aft mounted uh, helms, uh, very comfortable. You can see uh, your starboard bow. You also have pretty good visibility to the port bow and of course the port aft and starboard aft. I, I was actually surprised at the level of visibility you have there. The uh, boom you can see is well down, uh, giving you that enhanced sail area. Great uh, line bags there to keep all the spaghetti out of the way. Typical beautiful lagoon cockpit, typical beautiful uh, Bimini uh, with the um, uh, recessed uh, shades in there that are nicely tucked away. You can see the fold-out seat there briefly on the port helm. 
um, and it just folds up and out of the way so that you can access in and out of the cockpit. Dual uh, throttles on either side and um, again quite a comfortable position. I was really surprised uh, at the level of visibility you had. You have a nice two spreader uh, mast there and uh, as Lagoon always does, a very classy cockpit. There's no skinny slab of, of uh, fiberboard table or anything there. It's a solid teak and it looks really good. Heading up these stairs, we come to a very unique feature. That feature I was mentioning that replaces the, the retractable uh, shade over the uh, cockpit. This is a collapsible lounge. You can see the height of the boom, very low. Uh, this lounge can only be used at anchor, that's its main purpose, and the seats simply fold away when you're done and you want to go cruise. But when you're at anchor, you simply put a restrainer on the boom, flip up your seats, and et voila, you've got a beautiful Sky Lounge. This, of course, was the inspiration for the Versa Lounge, which adds back in uh, the solar panel so you don't lose that um, canopy level uh, solar that you have. Uh, if you're wondering what a Versa Lounge is, go back one or two, you'll quickly find out. Uh, we're going to head back down now onto the uh, port side decks. You can see the uh, flush mounted hatches, they're very nice. Heading forward uh, all the way along, you know it's a handsome boat. The uh, vertical windows keep out a lot of heat uh, but still look elegant. You've got uh, nice um, dolphin seats there, I wish they were in a nice uh, uh, teak, but there you go. The um, the forward cockpit uh, is done a little less generously here uh, in this version as you can see that it is on the 50. Um, basically everything else is the same. Uh, you've got steps up onto the cabin top. Uh, you've retained your nets. I, I am not a fan of that top mounted chain. I think you're going to have ugly stains on your beautiful white fiberglass in no time. Um, but uh, overall, uh, pretty nice. You know, the, the width of the hulls. Again, this is a this is a Lagoon 50 mold. So it, it was an exercise in branding and a few little things to get started before they did the first real excess mold, which is the 14. Uh, but your line handling's all very nice, comes all the way back to the uh, helm stations. So uh, you can also see the seat there with its uh, cover on it. Uh, the cockpit, huge as always, um, and beautifully executed. Uh, your materials here are excellent. Your cushions, there's no wrinkles or anything in them. They look very high quality. You've got a beautiful little kitchenette here. Uh, you've got your captive uh, lines, which uh, stay, keep everything nice and neat. Uh, inside, um, you've got very nice um, stainless uh, uh, filters, enough uh, stainless fiddles, sorry, on the Corian. And the Corian looks good. It's not quite the marble of the uh, lagoon, but it looks good. Uh, you know, you scan around here, you get everything that you need. Uh, you've got indirect lighting, you've got modern looking rounded corner cupboards, uh, nice finished uh, cabin ceiling. A little too much glossy fiberglass for me, a little too much white for me. Uh, the cushions look very comfortable, inviting. The table folds out, and that's a nice variation on uh, the center island from the 50. They've used that um, uh, bench seat with sort of saddle straps on it and leather, which has a good look to it. Now, navel gazing, you saw all of the glass that you have in the Lagoon, uh, sorry, in the XS-15 there, and indeed in the Lagoons. And of course, what you're having to do is constantly um, at night, run around and put uh, your shades on all of that. You're either dragging around the curtains, which tend to look a little tacky, or pulling down the shades, which takes a lot because there's a lot of windows in these things throughout. Wouldn't it be lovely if you could just flip a switch? Well, the tech is there, smart glass. And here we are, it's very simple. There's two ways of doing this. Either use the smart glass as a sandwiched panel with the uh, LCD layer in the center. Uh, here, basically, when it's off, uh, the molecules are uh, dispersed, or sorry, irregular, and the glass goes op opaque. When a current, a slight current is applied, 
the molecules align and your light goes through and the glass becomes transparent. So you can see right here how uh, significant the difference is. Uh, this is an office setting, of course, with uh, uh, the current off and then with the current on. So it does a fantastic job. Now, this is already being used. In uh, Rapido's uh, 50, uh, they've applied smart glass to their cabin. You can see where they've applied it here. Uh, they haven't applied it to the hatches, so you can see they're still clear. But uh, it is a tremendous benefit here because literally you flip a switch and Bob's your uncle, your curtains are down. You could actually control it completely from uh, the center console just like you do lights and everything else like that. So again, switchable inner layer. Uh, it's protected and it's bonded between the two sheets of glass and uh, it, it creates a, a simple on-off um, way of making the glass opaque. Now, if you don't want to use the glass or you want to retrofit, there are laminates, switchable smart film. Uh, and switchable smart film allows you to transform existing glass windows, partitions and acrylic screens, uh, or other transparent services for an instant switchable privacy and security. The uh, film is manufactured with a self-adhesive static cling layer ready to apply to a window. Switchable, fart smart <laughs> Switchable smart film is operated by a simple electrical switch to control opacity uh, of the switchable film. And it also offers thermal, solar and sound insulation benefits, helping to keep your boat cool, comfortable and quiet. So again, you can see it here in its application. Uh, again, when the current is applied, it straightens out the molecules and all of a sudden you're transparent. So wouldn't that be lovely instead of messing around with blinds? Back into the cockpit, we're looking around the kitchen area. You know, it's a pretty good sized kitchen dude. There's a lot of surface area there. Now we're gonna head down into the starboard, which is the owner's hull. I mean, it's very generous. You can reach all the way up to the top of that bed. It's not a thwart ship, but it might as well be. You've got so much space all around it there. Uh, you know, the, the, the finish is nicely done. Uh, quite honestly, Sylvia would probably prefer this. I'm a little more classic and she prefers modern. So in reality, this would probably really resonate with her. I mean, look at it. It looks like the Starship Enterprise with those shiny gray bulkhead beams and uh, the rounded windows and uh, and here uh, instead of putting the walk-in closet on this model they put the uh, another bunk in there uh, the head you know very nice roomy uh, it's a it's a dry head uh, look at the curved uh, corners on the edge of the cabins and then uh, you, into the uh, uh, bathroom here with the a huge shower lots of windows, beautiful lighting, nice countertops, two sinks. Uh, again, it's a Lagoon 50. What more could you want? Uh, lots of ventilation there. Uh, you can certainly uh, keep all of the moisture out of there as neat as possible. Uh, look at the curved corners on their cabinetry. Really looks good. Uh, Katana, please take note. Uh, walking up back into the saloon and uh, across. Heading down now into your guest cabins. Uh, we've got two cabins on this side with an option for a third. Um, there is your aft. You've also got an additional uh, refrigerator freezer. Again, very generous. Lots of headroom, lots, lots and lots of ventilation with the overhead um, hatches. Um, easy access up and around the bed. You can get in and out without disturbing your partner and easily make that bed. A beautiful uh, head here, dry head uh, with the shower, um, nice Corian on the countertops, really, you know, nicely done. Um, moving back now, uh, or forward, sorry, uh, they have a third, well, this would be the fourth cabin. Um, again, you can tuck that in there. Uh, and here is your uh, third full dry head. Um, heading into the bow, a uh, little less space, uh, but 
you know, you can't complain about that. That has more space along the side and I'm easy, more easily able to access the head of the bed than I am on any of the performance cats we've looked at. So uh, nicely done. I mean, the, the finish is, is really, really high quality. Um, okay, back out into the cockpit. It, what can you say? It looks great. Um, I, I do like the way the seats have folded up, nicely covered. Uh, we'll head down along and have a look down the side of the vessel just to give you a sense of how she looks overall. And, you know, the paint scheme and the colors with the orange and all that good stuff, you know, not bad. Uh, I'll, I'm anxious to see what an XS 15.5 or 16 or whatever the real XS mold version is of this will look like. Um, in this scenario, it just seems... I understand what they did. They got a new brand off and running quickly with the molds they had. And uh, they, they did the changes they could until they built a new mold and launched the real version, what they intended to do. Uh, but, it, you know, without knowing that, you're scratching your head and going, what the heck is this all about? Because it's not a performance cat. If you're enjoying what you see here, please hit subscribe, give me a like, and share this with a couple other folks that might enjoy it today. Thanks very much. Looking at pre-owned comparables, we're looking at vessels between 2016 to 2021, between 48 feet to 52 feet. Now our first one that we're looking at is a Lagoon 52, a logical comparison. And if we use our standard 50% on top of base price for a sail away, our XS15 is going to be about 1.1 million USD. Here we're seeing a 2018 Lagoon 52 for a million seventy five, so about the same for a three-year-old boat. Having said that, you do have a lot more space on this, uh, and let's face it, the XS15 is not a performance cat. It's just a 50 with rear helms and uh, an interesting interior. Uh, so I'd have to consider this, although quite honestly I, I find the um, interior of the Lagoon 52 is very dated and now that I'm thinking about it Sylvie would probably go way more uh, for the um, XS15 so uh, I might have to go with the 15 on that. Next up is a 2018 Neutromare 51 uh, they're looking for 1.115, 1.116 um, and you're looking again three-year-old yacht um, but it's a Neutromare. Uh, so your hull quality is higher, uh, solid um, bottom on the hull, uh, foam core. Uh, you're not going to have the same level of space, but you're going to have excellent finish, and this is a performance catamaran. I'd probably go with the Outremer in this case. Next up, uh, the Neil 51. We've got to put it in this category because that Neil 51 can do some significant speed and I'm quite certain we'll put the XS15 in its current configuration to shame. Uh, so a three-year-old uh, Neil 51, they're looking for 837,000 versus 1.1. Uh, the uh, try to fly here, assuming it's in great condition, I'd go with the Neil all day long. Uh, and finally, a 2020 Fountain Peugeot Saba 50. Uh, so you're looking at a, a two-year-old boat here. They're looking for um, 1.150. Uh, no, I would do the XS15 any day over top of this. Okay, moving into the Dave score. And before we go into it, I just want to remind you that every week in the uh, description below, I post a link to the Dave score for this week's boat so you can participate right along with me and I encourage you to. Also in that description is just about every link to every chart and graph and uh, website in this presentation. So everything you want is right there if you're interested to see it. So let's get right into the Dave score. So our XS15, uh, it positions in an interesting place, almost to the middle of the pack, which honestly surprised me. So the interior, I gave it a 6. Sylvie would probably give it a 7. The exterior, I gave it an 8, because I love that Sky Lounge. 
and you know they've done a lot of good things the cockpit is very comfortable the forward cockpit not as nice as the 50 but very nice uh, the interior um, as far as comfort goes I gave it a seven those cushions everything it, it's, it's very nice the exterior I gave it an eight again um, everything around there is extremely comfortable the um, performance I gave it a six it should probably have a five uh, the lazy sailor gave it a seven everything comes back to the helms there's nothing spectacular there condo gave it a seven it's not as quite as wonderful as the 51 but it's pretty good uh, geek appeal um, I gave it a uh, six there's nothing really get excited although that sky lounge is is pretty damn cool and value for money I gave it a seven overall I think that's a fair score uh, so overall it gets a 70 which puts it just ahead of, say, a Bally 4.8 um, and just behind uh, the Katana uh, OC50. Um, you know, if you think about it, in the perspective of what would Sylvia say, that makes a lot of sense. Each week, I not only like looking at the boats, but of the wine and of the art of the region from which the boats originate. It says a lot about the people and the passions put into these designs. This week for the art, we're looking at Albert Marquet and his painting, The Port of Saint Tropez from 1905. Marquet was born in 1875 in Bordeaux. In 1890, he moved to Paris to attend the École d'Arts Décoratifs, where he met Henri Matisse. They were roommates for a time and they influenced each other's work. Uh, Marquet began studies in 1892 at the Ecole des Beaux Arts under Gustave Moreau, a symbolist artist who was a follower of the romantic tradition of Eugene Delacroix. In these years, Marquet exhibited paintings at the Salon de Independence. Although he did not sell many paintings, the artistic community of Paris became aware of his work. His early compositions were characterized by a clear and patently fulvest approach in which he had fine control of the drawing and responded to light, not only by intensifying the strongest tones, but also by seeing the weaker ones in coloristic terms. Marquet and Matisse were already painting together in pure colors as far back as 1898. In the Acurel and the Luxembourg Gardens, in what was later to be called the Fauvis style. In 1905, he exhibited the Salon de Automal. Uh, sorry, in 1905, he exhibited at the Salon de Automne, where his paintings were put together with those of Henri Matisse. He became a lifelong friend of Matisse. I do hope you've enjoyed this week. It's a different one with a different yacht on its way to becoming something that wasn't quite there, but I think they're on the right path. If you have any comments, do leave them below. I love learning from the people who are watching this, and I hope you have a fantastic week. Cheers.